What's up guys, Larry Chen here. Welcome to another episode of Hennigan Autofocus. I'm here with my buddy BJ Baldwin. He's going to teach us how to shoot guns and we're going to shoot his pre-runner, Loki. <laughs> I'll stick to taking pictures. Look at this guy, always on social, keeping up his fans, <laughs> keeping up to date. <laughs> oh, this is going in there, okay. Yeah, so you taught me a little bit about shooting firearms. A lot. A lot. Of, okay, a lot. All right. It's kind of changed the game for me. Uh, it's super cool. It's super fun. I love the mechanical aspect of it. Doesn't run on batteries. At least the ones that I have don't run on batteries. The ones that you have run on batteries and they're very fancy. It's a cool ho hobby. It's an adult hobby and I'm really glad to kind of learn a lot from you about that. But Thanks, brother. We're here to talk about Loki. The story is I've seen it over the years. Uh, I've seen it evolve. I've seen you do some really cool things. And honestly, you've done a lot of these viral videos giving people rides, certain monster models or... Whomever, uh, right? That's, uh, that's what I prefer. Yeah, but that's the thing is, <laughs> is uh, this is kind of just like your fun vehicle and you've had it longer than any other vehicle, it seems like, huh? Yeah, I've, ha I've had it for quite a long time. Um, the story behind this, it, it used to be one of uh, my pre-runners that I would have in circulation. And now I have two other pre-runners. I have a primer and a backup. This is kind of, you know, it's kind of evolved into a very expensive, incredibly fun toy. Um, it's lots of fun even to drive on the street. People look at it, turns heads, it breaks necks. The people are blown away by it. I'm not the original owner of the vehicle. I did not build this vehicle from the ground up, but I have made several modifications to make it a little bit sweeter, add a little bit more sauce to it. John Bedding uh, originally built it. Unfortunately, uh, he got sick, he had some medical bills, and he had to sell it to pay for his medical bills. He sold it to Adam Ho Householder. Uh, John's fine now, he's healthy. Adam used it for a few years uh, pre-running, but it had this really puny motor in it. I bought it off of Adam for, for next to nothing. It had a bunch of holes in it, it wasn't sexy, it wasn't it didn't have good paint on it, and the interior was trash. And, We've done a lot of modifications to it to bring it to where it is today. Um, first thing we did is we pulled the motor out of it and we sold it to a guy that was building a, a little scooter for about $23. And then, <laughs> and then we put a big, uh, as big as you can get while still be able to run, run on pump gas in Mexico, we put a 434 cubic inch LS7 in it built by Danzio. We changed the transmission. We went from a three-speed turbo 400 to a 4L80E. Four-speed, so it's three-speed and overdrive so you can drive it on the highway. Uh, instead of topping out at like 90 or 100, it'll actually do about 125 miles an hour with the motor that's in it now. We changed the ring gear. We'll put a, a much better ring gear in it. We changed the suspension a little bit. Uh, we did uh, much bigger shocks on it, uh, different spring rate, different suspension package. And we got it working incredible. Um, out of all the pre-runners that I've driven and that I've, that I've drove, this one handles the best. It is the most comfortable. It has the smoothest ride. So it's, it's very, very special. I mean, we also, uh, we put different seats in it. Uh, we put the real high performing uh, Sparco seats in it's all carbon fiber. Um, we did some structural engineering to strengthen the cab to make it a little bit safer. We also did so uh, throughout the chassis. We rebuilt uh, the entire dash to accommodate some of the latest GPS navigation. We got one on the driver's side, one on the passenger side. You know, we did lights, we re-engineered re re the bumper and the air, we put an air dam on it. We did redid the grill, different coolers, and we just did a bunch of uh, massive upgrades to it. When I saw it, it had a lot of potential. It was a wounded dove. 
and now it's it's just absolutely amazing. Not only is it incredibly sexy, uh, everybody drools over it, but it also hauls ass. Not only on the pavement, not only in the washes, but in the big bumps. It's really fast and it's really smooth. Uh, and I got to thank my team for that because they put a lot of work into making this thing what it is today. We've had it for a long time and I'm never getting rid of it. Actually, I had somebody try to buy it off of me and I would not sell it uh, unless I could afford to build another one that was better. So um, I almost had it sold for 400000 to give you an idea of what it cost to build one of these. Okay. <laughs> all right, so... We uh, did the brakes, we redid everything. It's all got top of the line everything on it. So tell me, what did it actually start life as? in terms of what truck it was? Unlike most, pre, most high dollar pre-runners um, that are built specifically to pre-run uh, off-road races for top tier teams, they start life on a napkin, they evolve into a computer, they go into a computer for three months, and then they use a cab and doors, and that's it. A lot of people message me on Instagram uh, or on any social media channel that says, hey, I just bought a Tundra, uh, I want to turn it into a pre-runner or a trophy truck, you know, what's the first step I should take? You know, I hate, I hate to break their hearts, but that's like somebody uh, messaging Lewis Hamilton, Formula One champion, and saying, um, hey, uh, I just bought a 1978 Trans Am, I'd like to turn it into a Formula One car. It doesn't really work like that. So the reality of what goes into building a real pre-runner that'll go through bumps really, really fast and uh, accelerate really well, decelerate and change direction, for this level of performance, uh, you start with a cab and doors. It's literally just a shell. There's no interior or anything. You put the cab on a, a chassis table and you start to lay out tubes in the floor, build from the floor up. You build the cab, then you build the front of the truck, and then the back of the truck, and then you build the suspension. So there's a tremendous amount of engineering that goes into building these vehicles that most people don't think about. I, I even have a lot of people message me on Instagram like, hey, what lift do you have on the Blazer? I want to get the same one. It doesn't really work like that. The suspension on this vehicle, if you were to pay to have it engineered and built and completed, it's cost about $40,000 just for the arms. The shocks are another twenty to $30,000. Um, the testing that is involved in it is, is uh, you know, obviously there's an expense there to get it to working right. And at the end of the day, if you're going to build a pre-runner from the ground up, you use 1% of a production vehicle. So the fact that you would go to a dealership and buy a truck for 50,000 is, uh, is, it's just not how it works. You would use uh, $500 worth of equipment on that brand new vehicle. So the, the thing to do is to go get a cab at a junkyard and then bring it home and start engineering how you're gonna build the cage in the interior, how it's gonna be laid out, what kind of suspension you're gonna use and, and go from there. But even having three of the, the best guys in the world try and build a pre-runner, they take longer than race trucks because you have to have doors, you have to have a windshield, you have to have cap, instead of just bolting fiberglass to you know a monster. So there's a lot of engineering that goes into this, especially to make him go fast and make them reliable. Um, and this is a, this is a very, very uh, awesome vehicle. I love this vehicle. Amazing in terms of what it was to what we've brought it to. It didn't handle very well, it didn't stop very well, it didn't accelerate very well. It was just kind of a low budget uh, pre-runner built out of uh, what many of us in the off-road industry and in, in desert community would consider a classic uh, off-road truck in, in that of a, a 1978 Chevy Blazer. This one's blended together. This is actually my original front clip that I had in 2003. Uh, the first one actually went on my pre-runner and John Bidding used it, used it on this. It's got, uh, from what I understand, it's got 1991 bed sides and then the cab and, and obviously the back of it is a 1978 Chevy Blazer. In terms of performance, uh, suspension wise, it's got about, I would say 21 inches of wheel travel in the front. The trophy truck has about 25, so it's a little bit less. Uh, and in the back, it has about 28 inches of wheel travel, and the trophy truck has about 33. So it's pretty close. The wheelbase is where we come into a limiting factor in the performance as it relates to going through really big holes and big ditches. It's short, so it's got short, tiny legs. 
uh, most of us in the off-road industry that that race and that compete, we understand that. It means that it can't reach to the other side of something that's really big. But it does incredibly well for what it is. The race truck's 125 inches long. This one's about 106, 107 inches long. This truck's 88 inches wide. So it's not super, super wide, but it's wide enough to be uh, very, very stable. And despite what it may look like, the weight balance in this vehicle is about 50-50, even though the engine's in the front, it's still got a lot of weight over the rear tires and we got a cell in the back that's about 65 gallons. Another thing that I changed, I moved the spare tire from inside, it was inside and it looked you know, pretty cool, but I thought it would look, give it that Overland vibe if I put it on the back, and not only that, I have tons of space for gear in the back if I'm gonna go on a trip or if I'm gonna go pre-running and I can put all my gear and coolers and food, stuff of that nature. Uh, we, move, we also moved the jack to the back of the vehicle. Um, the, the fact that this is street legal, quote unquote, uh, it's, in it's Nevada. It's barely street legal. Nevada, it's easier to get pre-runners uh, legalized for street. We have less restrictions than they do in, like, say, California or New York. Uh, this vehicle is 100% street legal even in California because it uses a production frame. And it's not a frame from front to back. It's just there so that you can register it in California. And the frame is only about four feet long. Um, it goes from the, the back seat to the front of my feet, and then it's all stuck out with... Uh, 4130 inch and three quarter wall tubing as the rest of the main chassis, probably 95% of the main chassis. It's got a solid rear axle, uh, like the trophy truck, um, trailing arms. The shocks are 3.5 inch King coilover and a 3.5 inch King bypass. I've used King my whole motorsports career just about and i've won seven motorsports champ seven off-road racing championships on king for those that i'm racing against that are on different manufacturers i have a competitive advantage not only in the bumps and the big stuff because they handle better but also in reliability i have never had a king fail that wasn't related to uh, an, an assembly failure so somebody I've, I've had a shock failure due to somebody in my shop not putting it together right, but aside of that, I've never blown one up, I've never broken a shaft. They're the most reliable dampening system on the off-road market today. Let me chime in on that. So I have King shocks. It's basically the same thing, right? I have King <laughs> shocks on my FJ Cruiser, and uh, one of the things that I really pride myself in, and those guys pride themselves in, is being able to go to their facility in the OC, so Southern California, and I basically watched them make it out of a block of aluminum, you know, or yeah. tubes of aluminum, which is just so cool that that kind of manufacturing still exists in Southern California. Yeah, it's yeah. super, super cool. And if you're part of their motorsports program, they won't even blink if you ask for a tour. They'll take you through and the process and you can see how everything's assembled and they have uh, just the best quality assembled shocks uh, on the off-road market today. I have a question. So uh, how big are the tires compared to your trophy truck? Uh, these tires are a little bit uh, bigger, but not much. Uh, we used to run the RT. This was a, a tire that was funny. This, this tire uh, I will always put on this vehicle because this is a tire that was actually built and designed with my input. Uh, working with Toyo tires. So this tire is very, very special to me because it was built and designed for my application and my application only. Uh, other off-road drivers uh, have shared the tire and they've had a lot of success on the tire, but it's really special to me because uh, Toyo has been a great company to work with. Since I've been with them, I've been able to win two Baja 1000s and a couple championships, uh, five championships. They are awesome company to work with and more than anything, they listen to the driver. So I said, hey, I have a request. I need a bigger tire. I want 10% more surface area, 10% more biting edges, and a little bit more structure in the sidewall so that I can go through rocks a little bit faster. And they do their research. They are incredibly smart. Nobody is more obsessive about building the best, strongest, and lightest tire than Toyo tires. So that's why these tires will always stay on this truck. The ones that I'm running now, uh, have a little bit more uh, technological advancements than this tire because they've had five years to redevelop it. And the tire that I run now is four pounds lighter and it actually has uh, more tread life, uh, a little bit more tread life than this tire. So it's, it's uh, fantastic to run on. So this thing, uh, it has three seats, which is also different than your actual trophy truck, your race truck. Um, so you're gonna give us a ride? Yeah, yeah for gonna, sure, let's party. Gonna... This uh, 
It's gonna be insane. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs>